Good morning and thank you for being with us this Monday morning on Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the national dailies. We try to dissect it, we'll make sense of it as much as time would permit us and as much as we are able to, but of course would encourage you to get copies for yourself. This morning I have with me in studio Libros Oshoma, who will be uh, analyzing the papers with me as always on Mondays. Thank you for still being here. My pleasure. <laughs> and then we also have, of course, Ai Osori from uh, Berlin. She'll be, be with us uh, analyzing remotely from Berlin. Good morning, Ai. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Good morning. Yeah, how what are was you? The, I'm fine. What was that you taught me again? Guten, guten? Guten Tag. Ah, guten okay. Tag. Guten Tag. <laughs> okay, when I get there. All right. <laughs> okay, we'll begin with, uh, we have several papers to uh, analyze this morning, IE and Libros. Uh, they will be displayed now on the screens, and we'll take a look at each of them as they display them on the screen. Um, we will begin with the Punch newspaper. We have so many of them, but let's start with Punch. I don't know who Libros will be punching this morning. I normally would not punch like that, but well. <laughs> so the headlines for the Punch newspaper, it says, sit up or be fired. Lawan tells service chiefs after meeting with Buhari. That story is on page 29, 30, I believe, of the Punch newspaper. Wadume trial resumes today and calls for um, mount for killer soldiers prosecution. We also have Ghanaian thugs threatened attack, says security head. That's inside the Punch newspaper. APC, now the big story for the Punch newspaper, APC Edo set for showdown as governor uh, primary holds today. So today is the D-Day. Gatherings, APC acting as if it's above the law, says state government. And um, we don't need Obaseki's permission to organize our primary, the party is saying. Reverse APC suspends Gerdom for flouting party's constitution. We have a picture story down there. Two dead, many injured. Uh, in Lagos, about an expressway as tanker explodes. That sad event occurred yesterday, I believe, and we have picture stories to that effect. Now, we will review suspended strike in July. That's according to resident doctors, but that's good news already. Thank you. Uh, that they are thinking of suspending the strikes. All right, so we still have below there. Uh, Ogun Volcanizer arrested for stealing, uh, well, female customers' underwear. That, there you go again. That story is on page four. And finally, I won't resign, says Akerodolu's deputy after defecting to PDP. That story is on page 10. Now, Libros, we'll begin with you this morning. Yeah, what do um, you want to punch, or what do you want to punch? I want to, I would take on um, the story on um, the demolition of uh, the Nigerian High Commission in Ghana. Yeah. Um, uh, it's um, first and foremost shameful and unfortunate that uh, white demolition was ongoing, despite the fact that um, the building was very close to the police headquarters in Ghana and that um, the police did not come you to know, aid. to their aid until after, the, until after the demolition, despite, you know, having written officially to the uh, Ghanaian police. Secondly, also, by virtue of Article 22 of um, the Vienna Convention on the Diplomatic Premises, that even the Ghanaian government cannot, you know, step into that premises without the consent mm -hmm. of the occupier of that premises. And so, for an outsider to come into a diplomatic premises and even as I speak the Ghanaian government issued an unsigned press release claiming that security personnel had been deployed to that place but from eyewitness Should accounts such be recognized even. To, to, from eyewitness account it is obvious that um, from pictorial evidence that there were no policemen they just came there you know while the bulldozer was still there and while the man the in, in, intruder was still there they had a friendly chat with him and then they allowed both the man and the bulldozer to go and there was no security presence in that place and also i expect the nigerian government to actually you know 
demand not just an explanation, it's a, an investigation and a restoration of that premises mm -hmm. from the Ghanaian authority and failure to so do, they should take diplomatic steps to remedy, you know, that. I mean, uh, that's quite unfortunate because if people move in with bulldozers, I would say that it is planned. You don't just get a bulldozer. That's what this is the first time he came before the whole building and started knocking on the walls of or the fence of the building. And it was after that time that the, the Nigerian High Commission in Ghana, the acting High Commissioner, did wrote a letter to the police authority, and nothing was done when the man came thereafter to knock down the building. Mm. All right, let's go to Aisha now. Ai, are you there? I'm here. Okay, what, what are your thoughts? I know you would like to take on other matters, but what are your thoughts on this development? Uh, I, honestly, I think that everything Libero said is, is correct. I mean, there's the Vienna conventions and all, but it makes me, what my mind went to was just how low have we fallen in the eyes of, you know, even regionally, mm. that we would think that a country like Ghana that we consider brothers, our brothers, our little brother, whatever the relationship we have, that this kind of thing would happen. Yeah. And no outcry, there's no strong words from the president, you know, who is usually very vocal about many things. So for me, it just made me think, you know, who is the current ambassador to Ghana? Do we even have one? You know, I guess those are the things that are racing through my mind as I was listening to liberals, just saying, who is our ambassador? Do we have the right people there? When we, you know, ignore career diplomats, especially for sensitive positions, you know, the funny thing is in Nigeria, our priorities are always warped. We think going to in, in quotes, the West are the juicy positions. But truly, the, the, our most skilled diplomats should be in the countries around us, our neighbors, you know, building African alliance, being, building Pan-Africanism, building, you know, collaboration around West Africa. So it just made me think, yeah, like everything else, this is just another symptom of how badly governed we are. Mm -hmm. I'm just quite quickly looking at um, ambassadorial appointment. In June of 2017, President Nana Akufu Addo named Rashid Bawa as Ghana's ambassador to Nigeria. I hope he responds. Anyways, um, we need to take, I mean, action needs to be taken. I heard you, I saw you nodding. No, we don't have an ambassador in Ghana. We have an acting. Acting. Ah, you know, you somebody, see? Acting, so, yeah, so we don't have a current ambassador. So our Ghana. issues are really so, complex so, in this country. So, like Aisha really? said, um, we, you know, rather than the, you know, look for how we can build alliances with, you know, um, our neighboring countries, you know, strong alliances, you know, pan-Africanism, we always want to go to the West, you know, we think those are the juicy, you know, positions, and, 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 and it's, it's very sad. Maybe it's, it's greener sad. out there. Aye, is it greener out there? You can tell us. I'll be now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on. What other issues would you want to raise this morning before I come back to Libras who's in studio from the... Well, I I know the big story of the showdown of the APC primaries happening in Edo, I guess that one is interesting to me. It's an ongoing saga that I guess all Nigerians are watching. So for me, I just thought it would be interesting to see how the day ends. Uh, and lots of mem memes have been going around, you know, about APC, PDP just being the same with cross carpeting be between, yeah. you know, the fluidity with which people move between parties is making people sort of, you know, consider, reconsider again. Mm -hmm use of our parties are ah, if it's so easy for pdp to pick up an apc candidate the apc to pick up a pdp candidate really is there a difference and maybe it also speaks to the apathy with which the growing apathy uh, amongst voters who, who are just checked out of the system and don't think that anything me really meaningful would change which brings me to a favorite topic of mine electoral reform we need electoral reform honestly we need independent candidacy i know that it's tricky I know it will not solve all our problems, but I really do think that the parties would be a bit shaken if we could just get independent candidacy in, because at least maybe people will start beginning to see real choice. Mm -hmm. Since we cannot force the parties to be democratic, so what are the other options that we have? Mm. Interesting. Hey, yeah, for me, um, these are do uh, very Your important. People. Yes, my people, and that there's been this saying that. Um, you know, APC would have um, a chairman in the morning, another one acting <laughs> one in the afternoon, the another afternoon. one in the evening. Uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's so sad. And it's, it's I can laughable. tell you that yeah, it's laughable and it's a ruling party syndrome. And like Aisha has said, you know, APC didn't have this crisis until they became the ruling party in Nigeria. The same thing with PDP. If you remember, PDP also, you know, 
um, they didn't have the crisis. Or if in 1999, their first primaries were hitch free, mm -hmm. but from 2003, all the primaries they had, they had you know parallel congresses. For APC in 2015, they didn't have, they had hitch free primaries until you know 2019 you saw parallel congresses and so that's to tell you that we do not play party of opposition here everybody wants to be you know um, where the action is and so that's why you see politicians would drag the soul of a political party the moment they feel that the political party has the muzzle mm. to to put them in office and without electoral reforms truly we can only talk about this and dance around the issues and then another thing i would suggest is that a lot of us you know if if you have electoral reforms and you make the party more transparent a lot of people would you know enroll to be members of this political party so mm -hmm. you won't have the worst of us governing the best of us where you know um, t truck drivers and um, tipper drivers can suspend, you know, national chairman, mm. where, you know, dropouts become um, um, governors and ministers, or where, you know, touts will sit down and say they have suspended the governor from a party. You know, it becomes very, very unfortunate. And we must address those issues. Right. And the only way we can do them is now. The only time we can do them is now. Otherwise, if we leave them, you know, a time will come where it will be very difficult. It becomes the convention. It becomes the practice. And what is, once it is con in the convention, the opportunity to change them become very difficult. Mm. All right. Uh, the opportunity to change them become very difficult. Very strong lines there. In the interest of time, we would uh, take the nation newspaper. <clears throat> it would be displayed on the screen. Oh, thank you. Already displayed. Ondo Deputy Governor's defection raises dust in PDP. Ajayi uh, pecks out of the government's house. That's on the, on the front page, but the story is on page four. Of, um, of the nation newspaper, Ajayi packs out of the government house, rather. Aisha Buhari's ADC security aids restored. Pan panel submits report on page four. Government releases 13.6 billion naira to health workers. Uh, man clubs kids to death with pestle. My goodness, what sort of story is that? Those are on page six and page two. Uh, that's a bit of good news. The government releasing the fund for health workers. Again, we have the picture story of the three tankers that exploded on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The story is on page two. Police, DSS, INEC deployed in Edo for APC shadow poll. Well, uh, Izeyamu Odudu optimistic on ticket. Uzodima panel to obey COVID-19 rules. Still on the same matter. We have the figures, global figures of COVID-19 now on 9.6 million globally. And then uh, we have Nigeria has passed the 20,000 mark. We are at 20,244. It's increasing by today. Uh, we have active cases, 12,000 plus. And on the global scenes, we have deaths uh, recorded, 468,723. Uh, we have recovered 4.7 million recovered persons. All right, that's it on the Nation newspaper. Um, aviation loses, um, aviation, I beg your pardon there, aviation loses uh, six, 63 billion naira to the virus crisis. Uh, that's uh, thanks to COVID-19, if you like. All right, let's begin now. Um, Libros, do you want us to talk about... Um, this tanker explosion I and the Ibadan. Oh, you want me to? Uh, okay, Aisha. Um, well, yeah. I, you can see those uh, disturbing images, I believe, uh, from the tanker explosion. Yeah. Lagos yeah. Ibadan Expressway is mm -hmm. always on the news. What more can be done? Sadly. To be honest, I, again, you, you sort of think, why is this the most efficient way of transporting oil products? Mm. Since we know our uh, roads are death traps, you know, I, I know that we've been working on the Ibadan Lagos Expressway for years. In fact, it's one of life's biggest mysteries why, how many years that work will take. Life's I'm, I'm biggest with... mystery. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So honestly, I just wonder it, since we know our roads are bad, what alternatives do we have? We had this excitement about trains, trains, but the, were the trains going to be just for passenger trains? 
But we're not going to also try and consider using trains to move these types of goods, you know, maybe take them out of our main roads, our major highways, especially these busy ones. You know, you'd like to think that people in positions of um, authority, decision-making policy will factor all these things in. The truth is, if we look at the number of people who die on our roads every year, it might be far surpass most of the diseases that kill Nigerians every day. Yeah. Hmm. So it's just really sad, honestly. And may their souls rest in peace. As usual, they will just be, we will never know their names, we will never know their faces. You, and we become desensitized to the daily deaths on our, you know, in Nigeria. I just, to be honest, I just wish we would hold life uh, with a bit more regard. Mm -hmm. I, just don't know the, I don't have the answers. Those who are in government that we voted for should answer these questions, honestly. Right. We should put them on the spot. Please invite them to your to your newspaper review. You, you, we, we are more than happy to always bring them in. I, but you know, they won't uh, come. They will. They, they won't, won't. They won't of course, come. You know, unfortunately, I'm, I'm tongue you know. in cheek. I know they won't come. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. Yeah, Libras, your thoughts. Um, while um, the governors, deputy governors, are decamping from one party to the other, <laughs> and people are jostling for positions in office, and then the you know followers are caught in between you know social media insulting one another people also are not um, a lot of people also see covid19 as covid419 mm. and um, it, what's the other word pandemic the other as word? pandemic because <laughs> of all of these things i shall talk about the life the value we place on human lives here and so it is the tanker exploded, cars burned, and people died. And then the next thing you hear, the numbers of the argument between eyewitnesses and government officials on the actual numbers, no mm -hmm. names, no faces. And so they are like faceless people. Mm -hmm. And so when you have all of this, we become so insensitive to the plight of you know, death and all of So and people will tell you that, you know, like um, what's the name of this um, honorable member of, of the House of Rep? You know, he spoke about um, the issue of um, a lockdown on the uh, COVID-19. And he said, look, he wonders why government had not locked down the country yes, or the no. Northeast over insecurity. I wonder why we have not <laughs> locked down the country on the state, state of our roads. You know, now imagine a country where as far back as in 1977, you have pipe bone water in villages, but in the year 2020, you drink water from overhead tank. A situation where as far back as 1977, 1978, 1979, we had walking railway lines and we had you, you know, massive you know, government mass transport buses. But in 2020, we are, to we are talking about still you know, building railway lines for those monorails when the world has moved, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, electric rains and, you know, and yet we're still talking about how we fly more now and our roads are deplorable. We're talking about how we would open up waterways from um, Ikorodu to Lagos Island, mm -hmm. where the distance between Lagos and, and um, Saple uh, uh, via the waterways is less than one hour 30 minutes. You know, so, and these are opportunities because you have, like I always say, you have the worst of us ruling the best of us. Nobody will see these opportunities apart from what will come from government. And that's why we operate a the bottle system of government where, at the end, the governors visit Abuja once every month to collect their largesse of the federal allocation. As I speak to you, nobody is thinking of how do we ensure that we make these roads more motorable? Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that we'll open up, you know, transports, a transportation system make it lucrative so that I can I do not need to drive from Bagada to Lagos Island mm -hmm. for this program I can sit down in a train I can sit down in a public bus and I'll be very comfortable I won't be thinking of somebody robbing me with red oil when I'm putting on a white shirt no. so when you have people who do not I'm not saying think outside the box because that would be too far that would be asking too much wow. think within the box thinking no, within the box you have so all of all these opportunities but yet the box is even too too big for them to think within. And, and, and so it's very shameful. And that's why with this now, we'll just, you have worst case, too many silence for some of us who are, who are, who are conscious of these things. And it ends there until the next one happens, we'll begin to mm -hmm. analyze. Until we all march out, the way we march to churches, sorry, quickly, I'm very angry. Until we all march out the way we march to churches, and sit down, I'm not saying don't, don't, don't go and destroy anything. Just sit down on the Lagos Ibada Expressway and say, look, Today we will do night vigil. 
we will do Holy Ghost Congress, mm. we will do Jumat on this road until the government do something about deplorable state of our public infrastructure. We'll get results. But until we do that, nothing, nothing will happen. That's we'll keep right. on saying it is well. It's quite unfortunate. It isn't well, actually. It's unfortunate. All right, in the interest of time, we'll go to the Guardian newspaper. Uh, it would be displayed uh, for you. Uh, but before they do that, the Guardian newspaper already, thank you very much. Anxiety as debt service burden stokes uh, bankruptcy. That's on the front page there. Um, the story is also continued on page six. And on Doe Deputy's governor's defection deepens, uh, deepens APC crisis. And then uh, first gunshots into the villa. Um, that's on the editorial. And of course, we have the picture story, and then we have COVID-19. Very quickly, we're going to take two stories. I, can you take one story from the Guardian newspaper? I mean, I know you mentioned COVID, but honestly, it's people, I, I had a conversation yesterday that scared me. Somebody in Nigeria was like, when they see COVID cases, the official numbers like this one saying 20,244, that they automatically multiply that by four hmm. or three to get a sense that that's the real number because we're not we're still not testing enough hmm. and this idea that we have a decentralized cdc's testing you know how are we still getting updates i mean it's i'm not seeing from the headlines any of the headlines in newspapers that we've looked at any statement from the government from the presidential task force on covid i mean have they completely abdicated their responsibility on this area meanwhile we have gotten a lot of funds from you know from other countries from the eu and, and so on i was on a call with president jonathan last week where he was reeling out all these numbers mm. of all the kind of financial support we've gotten so what has been done with that money is anybody going to give us a sense as a public where this money has been spent what else is being done i saw in another newspaper sorry that river state was saying that they're the epicenter of covid in, in south south we know that cross river is obviously deny in denial so what exactly is going on i mean what's the future what 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 are we seeing in our future is the health minister still doing briefings is the cdc ncdc still doing briefings is that also, also, i'm stammering because it's almost like we've forgotten that this thing exists right. it's still with us what are we doing it's still with us. It's still with us. I mean, clearly there are so many uh, issues around the communication strategy. Um, you know, the average Nigerian will, would, not, will tell you they don't even believe uh, COVID is real, you know, and we can blame it to the sort of communication that we, we had from the beginning. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't have the answers, as you would say. I don't have the answers. Maybe Libras has the answer, but well, let's hear your final thoughts. Uh, yeah, paper, um, 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 external loan heat. 33.18 billion dollars mm. um, uh, and um, you know government um, currency depreciation affect capacity to service the debt and so for me we are not only eating up today we are also eating to the future of our generations and there are no social infrastructure they are mono mono products uh, oil the price also is falling uh, there are no social infrastructure also to boost the repayment. So government can't make money. Even tax, is, you can't even, no matter how much you drag people into the tax net, it's you know when they have money that you'll be able to at least generate revenue from taxes. And so you sit down, you look at all of this, you ask yourself, 10 years from now, if care is not taken, Nigeria is going to be worse off than we already are. And, and so that's why Nigerians should brace up and sit up and begin to call their leaders accountable. For the fact that you are earning 100150 today does not mean that 10 years from now that money will be guaranteed. A lot of people are already losing well, their that jobs. that money will be worth Yes, it. and so, and that's why the uh, international community should also come to the aid of some of these, some of us, because if care is not taken, the people are good. Because Nigerians will feel you have alternatives. So once you can migrate to Canada, you know, and all of that countries, you think you've left the problems behind. But you're going to also put pressure on the infrastructures from, you know, other people. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need to begin to call out our government to account for every cover that is borrowed now. Not just say, oh, you, the burden is on you to repay. But what are you spending this money on? How are you, the ones recovered, what have you spent them on? Mm -hmm. Those recovered from looters, where are they? The Abacha loot, where is it? Now there is running battle between Magu and um, the um, Attorney General on recovered funds, loot. And so we need, the president should not just gloss over it. 
we need a strong statement in that direction also, considering the fa fact that the debt is going higher and the infrastructure infrastructures are dropping. They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are not commensurate to the money that we have borrowed so far. Unfortunately, too many questions, but uh, very little answers. I thank you yeah. for joining us. As always, it's a pleasure to have you weigh in on matters that border our nation. And do stay safe out there. Thank you. You. All right. And of course, Libros in studio. It's always good to have you. Thank you so very much for being with us. My pleasure. Right, and that's how we wrap it on Off the Press. Remember, the time is 8.30 a.m., Monday to Friday, here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Amaka Okoye. Stay safe out there. <laughs>